Northeast of Venezuela lie two islands that couldn't be more different, Trinidad and Tobago. Together they form the island nation of the same name. African, Amerindian, Indian and European influences can be felt in the cultures of the two Antilles islands. Tobago is the smaller of the two islands and exudes typical Caribbean charm. Daniel Defoe used Tobago as a model for the island on which Robinson Crusoe is stranded. The larger Trinidad is the economic heart of the two islands. Life here is somewhat faster than on Tobago. The capital, Port of Spain, is a mixture of traditional and modern elements. Different cultures have an influence on people's lives and find expression in their religion and music. Two groups of people lived on Trinidad long before Christopher Columbus landed there in 1498. The peaceful Arawak people and the Caribs who'd migrated from South America. Over the years, the two groups intermingled. Their descendants were called Amerindians and can still be found in the rainforest near the city of Arima. According to tradition, they choose a monarch for life, known as the Carib Queen. You select it, they just select a queen. And all the members here have to agree when they select you. If somebody say that they don't want you, they want to know what is the reason why that they doesn't want you. You have to say it right there. The Amerindians have shaman who carry out a variety of rituals and ceremonies. There are differences in, 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 in the ingredients that we would put in the fire. There will be differences in the chants that we use. And um, for example, if somebody is ill, we will be using herbs, different herbs that we have collected from the forest. But we would have, have done a ceremony asking Creator's permission to harvest those plants. So it would have a ceremony before the ceremony of healing. Spirituality is an energy. And our spirituality, our belief system is that there is life in everything, so we show that respect. There is nothing that we would do without asking permission of Creator. They pass on their knowledge to their students orally. There are, there are some people who question me about why I don't, I don't write down or, or do a DVD or so, uh, something, but there are some things that, some knowledge that were handed down to me. According to our culture and our spirituality, I cannot do it that way. I have to pass it on to the other person or persons. From the 17th century onwards, African slaves were brought to Trinidad. The largest group of them, the Yoruba, came from West Africa and had a strong influence on the cultural and religious life of the slaves. They brought with them their own religion, known as Orisha. In the Yoruba language, the faithful are able to contact the gods or Orishas. Olopa, Ariku Babawa, Ariku Babawa. Orisha uh, is a concept among the Yoruba speaking peoples of West Africa, Nigeria. In simple terms, Orisha are divine celestial beings and intelligences uh, that are part of the cosmic governance in the divine scheme of things. Human beings under the Yoruba theological system have access to these divinities by way of special covenants with them as you enter into their guilds or associations. During the time of slavery, Orisha developed into a cult, bringing together elements of traditional African Orisha and Christian influences. As you say, there is a certain degree of inner feeling with uh, whatever is invisible that is there that I, maybe it can't be quantified, maybe it can be measured, I don't know, but that exists between the devotee 
and your ratio. And you know, hence the reason we were saying earlier that um, you know, people come into these guilds of the Orisha, so to speak, right? And so by coming in into the guild, it's like your telephone system. Your, your phone is activated and therefore you now have access in the communication process. The Orisha religion has many deities, which have different significance for believers. The deities are often put on an equal footing with Catholic saints. What we had was conscripted identity for Orisha, right? Um, so in Trinidad and Tobago, Shango is St. John, but in Cuba, Shango is Santa Barbara. So in each geopolity, in each peculiar environment, the devotee by uh, his own cerebral wrestling with these concepts would have reconscripted um, identities to these various um, Catholic scenes, if he was in a Catholic territory. As the first slave ships arrived from Africa, the slaves had everything taken away from them. Their honour, their dignity and their families. The only thing that remained was their music. Dexter London continues to make traditional African drums. I am specialised in the rhythm drums. The rhythm, the bass and the lead drum, which is the, 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 what we call the cutter. But I make basically any type of drum. But in Tobago, we have two types of drums. We have what we call the African drums, which is like the jimmy, shapes like a snow cone. Some fellas say shapes like a lady, you know? <laughs> and then what we have a smaller drum that we call the tambourine. It's about this thick, goes right around. So that is the drum that we use when this type, the African type, was banned. Our senior citizens say that everything originated from one source. You know, all the drums, the steel pan, the type of music, it all came from one source. You know, and it spread out into different areas. The British colonial masters banned the slaves from playing African drums, and so they searched for new forms in which to express themselves musically. Oil production played an important role on the islands, and so the slaves began to use discarded oil drums as instruments. Thus, the national instrument was invented, the steel pan. They were forbidden to use the African drums because they used it for their religion and their religion is um, the Orisha movement is one where when they start to beat the drums they get into um, some sort of frenzy looking thing they begin to divinate and the slave masters were afraid of them so they stopped them from using the drums and one day somebody picked up a garbage bin just by chance and started pounding on the garbage bin and it was realized that by the time afternoon came the pitch of the notes that were coming from the pan were a lot higher than when they started in the morning. That's because the metal stretched and then people went and um, tried trial and error and managed to get two notes, then three notes and so on and that's how the whole thing began. In a large orchestra, the steel band has six major, six major parts. The tenor, which is known to be the leading pan or the leading instrument, that is uh, that, that one that carries the melody. And then you have the, uh, the seconds, the double seconds, that actually supports the tenor. And then there's a guitar, there's a cello, there's a quadraphonic, and it goes all the way down to the bass. Then the rhythm, which consists of the drum set and whatever we could put our hands on to, to, to just drive that rhythm at home. 
The steel band is mainly a rhythmic instrument. Every kind of musical style can be played on the steel pan. We can play whatever you want us to play. We also play reggae, Bob Marley, Michael Jackson, whatever. Banning of African drumming in the 19th century led to the development of a unique musical style in Trinidad, Calypso. This is for all my PNM. <laughs> the music is influenced by West African work songs, which were sung on the plantations to give a sense of rhythm to the work. My name is Rowley, as everyone knows, and it's a name that I wear with pride. is like what you would know as the blues. So you tell your story, you tell, you tell of things that irk you, you tell of things that you love. It's social commentary and political commentary. And there is also party to it too. The Calypso songs tell stories and the social and political commentaries on contemporary events. At the beginning of the century, Calypso functioned like a newspaper reporting and commenting on various topics. There are various stories, but I think I love the story that it came out of the slave trade when they were kind of like telling their stories of what hurts them and all like that. And the women used to be the one that used to be backing while the men are singing. But now the women has come to the forefront and we are telling our old stories too. All the money gone from the treasury It's how you feel, you, you just express it in music. Because then we had the merging of soul music and calypso which made soca. So you have various types of it and there various genres of the right then there's calypso. But I love to be the Kaisonian, which is the true defender of the art form. Look, I come from Mason of First you christen me as a rat, then you can check to the goody pot, and then we are want to burn hooligan. The Parang music style draws on the tradition of Trinidad's Spanish-speaking minority. In the otherwise multi-ethnic environment of Trinidad, this population group is made up of the descendants of Spanish settlers, native people and African slaves, as well as Venezuelan immigrants. The Parang tradition was one of the customs of this group of people. Parang music is still performed at Christmas time, when groups of musicians travel from house to house giving concerts. The, the, the music that came from Spain was uh, the slow, very slow Aguinaldos. But then again, because of the rhythm concept, the, the different types of beats that they have from Venezuela, it was a fast beat. So that is where the conflict, the, the conflict of thought comes in with respect to where Parang actually came from. People would go and look for their friends once a year and that, that once a year is around Christmas time. So special meals are prepared and special drinks. Uh, the meals include Spanish traditional food like the pastel, the empanadas. We have um, a drink they call sorrel that that tree actually bears around Christmas time. I sing Parang from my heart and from my soul. Parang is, it's a love. And uh, since my mother's death and now my father, I sing Parang for my mother and father. 
The exclusively Spanish texts originally had religious themes. Today, they tell stories about worldly pleasures. It's almost really between a man and a woman, and um, there was a sort of a, sort of a separation. And uh, I was blaming the woman, and the woman was blaming me. So I decided to put on a performance to accept her back into my life. I guess people move because it's a beat, it's a rhythm, and we are Trinidadians, and Trinidadians have a rhythm, okay? What you would find here in this band, I guess what you would find with me, is that when I perform, I perform it with my entire body, because the rhythm, the rhythm gets to me. You know, the sound of the mandolin, the sound of the bass, the sound of the, the percussion instruments, it gets to you, it's a vibe, it's a vibration, not just, it's, it's not just music. The Indian diaspora also plays an important role on Trinidad. Indians are the largest ethnic group on the island. When slavery was abolished in 1850, the English began to employ Indians as labourers. Nowadays, Hinduism plays an important role on Trinidad, and Indian Hindu centres are commonplace. Well, Trinidad and Tobago has always been a Christian country, totally Christian, until 1845, when indented labourers came from India to work on the sugarcane plantations in Trinidad. And they brought with them Hinduism. So since 1845 to the present time, we have been practicing Hinduism, Orthodox Hinduism in Trinidad. In other words, the largest statue of the Hindu god Hanuman outside of India can be found on Trinidad. Hanuman Murti is Hanuman statue. Hanuman is, a, is our famous god of strength and valor and determination and spirit. Our, Indian, our, our forefathers who came to this country, they, they worshipped Hanuman. It is, it is the teachings of Hanuman which have helped us to survive in a very hostile environment when our forefathers landed here. The environment was very hostile towards Indians. Indians were not welcome. They were treated as an as a uncivilized people with different habits, different customs, different languages. And they could, they, it, took, it, took, it took a very, very, very long time, even up to the present time. The certain people in Trinidad cannot accept the way of life of the Hindu. The Hindu way of life is a, is a different life. And our Hindu philosophy is, is logical, it, is, it, is, it can stand up to scrutiny, it has stood the test of time. So it is, it is now that people in the, with their liberal thinking are beginning to read much more about Hinduism and to accept the different aspects of Hinduism as for example reincarnation, um, teachings on yoga and, and all different aspects of Hinduism are so very relevant to the world today. The musical style Tsoka Chutney developed from the influence of Indian culture. Soka stands for soul and calypso, while chutney represents the Indian influence. Well, Soka chutney actually combines two cultures together. We are giving you soka and we're giving you chutney. Both is traditional. They are both traditional music of the Caribbean and of course Trinidad and Tobago. Soka and chutney both originated from Trinidad. This is where we're at right now. And what we've done, we've modernized it a bit. Um, it goes years back where you would get a lot of the English and Indian coming together. And now um, it's the same, but we, we've added a lot more of upbeat music and there's a lot of instrumentation in our music in modern day.
to get the people involved and as Nisha mentioned you know it's from two cultures it's from African and it's from Indian and we fuse it because it's a Caribbean country so we are Indo-Caribbean people then you know and to just give you a little taste you know we will do songs like um uh, Hindi like Tare Vasite De Denge Janve Then we will put the so kind it Juve morning everybody chipping Juve morning everybody chipping Juve morning you know that's how we fuse the music together <laughs> country has many many different cultures races and religion so it works very very well I mean long ago of course you would have gotten African drums you would have gotten Tassa which is Indian drums and now you're getting it together in Soka Chutney In the southwestern corner of Trinidad is the largest pitch lake in the world, the Rea. The lake has an area of over 41 hectares and is almost 80 meters deep in the center. 30 tons of natural asphalt are discharged every day. The surface quickly cools and becomes so hard that it can be walked off. According to legend, the pitch lake is a punishment from God. Before the Spanish arrived, the Kaima Indians lived there. One day, in a rage, their chief killed the colibri, a bird sacred to the gods. As a result, the earth opened and the entire village was swallowed up in the asphalt. But the punishment of God proved to be a blessing. In the 17th century, the Spanish king ordered a refinery to be built to allow the black gold to be brought back to Spain. The demand for tar in Europe was growing constantly and exports increased. In 1845, the first asphalt road was laid in Paris. Asphalt from the pitch lake in Trinidad was also used in the construction of the Brenner Freeway in Austria. In einigen Mulden baden die Menschen, da das Schwefel in der die Wasser gut für die Gesundheit ist. Now there are pools out here that you can have a swim in, but the pool that I am in, it is not safe for bathing because this is the mother of the lake and it is unsafe. As the gas and the water comes up, you cannot see the bottom of the pool. You will observe the oiliness. So that is how you would know the pools are not safe to bathe in. But there are sulfur pools out here, which is good for rheumatism, arthritis, skin diseases, mosquito bites. It also cleans your jewel. Excavation pits are quickly refilled with asphalt rising up from the deep. In this way, the world's largest pitch lake is likely to last for several hundred more years. The island's various peoples tell the story of Trinidad, from an untouched paradise to the time of the Arawak, from colonization and the slave trade to the modern Caribbean metropolis.